Greetings to you at All Saints in Whitefish and Columbia Falls, Montana. I am Scott Hayashi and I am the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Utah. And I am thrilled that you at All Saints are considering doing improvements and adjustments and changes to your church building that will benefit not only you, but also the environment. We in the Diocese of Utah have taken this call very seriously and this building which I am presently sitting um, and speaking to you from has gone to great lengths to help preserve our environment and at the same time for us to be good stewards of the resource that God has given us. The idea was to build the most environmentally friendly building possible as a center for the diocese, a hospitality center, and an inexpensive alternative to hotels or nonprofit groups. It would be a new diocesan mandate to be the stewards of the earth that we are called to be. That was in 2007. Since then, the building has continued with a staff committed to being stewards of the environment. Congressional delegations have studied the place, newspapers have written about it, and even the LDS Church architects toured the building to see what they could do in their ward houses. The message has spread to our congregations. It must be done, and the good news is it can be done. What's exciting about the building is, first of all, the overall environmental stewardship and our commitment to reduce, reuse, and recycle that is apparent in most everything we do. And why is this building so studied? It's because it's used 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For example, it has a heating bill probably smaller than your household bill. Our gas bill averages $90 a month. That is amazing when you consider this. The Episcopal Church Center of Utah opens its doors to nonprofits all year long. How many people will be here? We're anticipating in the 15 to 18,000 guest range uh, for the building. That's about a 15 to 25 percent growth in guest attendance from last year. And keep in mind our sleeping rooms hold about 18 people a night. They all take hot water showers and the diocese serves about 2,000 meals, all cooked here by using gas. And this goes on also in the dead of winter. And again, that total heat bill is $90 a month, never even a hundred. The heat and air conditioning system is probably one of the more fascinating environmental features. Water is pumped from the aquifer in a closed pipe system. It comes in at the Earth's temperature of 59 degrees. The pipes are then merely heated about nine degrees and sent through the building. Electric pumps are assisted by the pressure of water going through the maze. At that point, there's pressure, and the pressure from one area to another helps to move the recirculated groundwater throughout the building, which is also an energy-efficient way to do that. The pipes become radiators behind computer-controlled fans that send the heat into the rooms. Of course, in summer, the 59-degree water is about perfect to cool the building. The water is then returned to the aquifer, cooled or heated to return at the temperature it left. Of course, there are electric utility costs for the pumps that drive the electric bill up some, and there are the fans, but the building has to be seen as a whole. There are also electric utility savings. During the daytime, lights are seldom turned on in the building. And really, the cost of heating or cooling the pipes, even the few degrees, is also reduced. The windows have a lot to do with that. You can really get an idea of the windows, the number of windows that we have, and also how the windows are inset three feet. This allows for the hot summer sun not to be directed into the building to keep it cool in the summer, but to allow the low winter sun to actually um, help to heat the building. Also, most windows are flush with the ceiling, and the ceilings are reflective with white colored material. This makes most interior lighting unnecessary. In fact, I'm shooting this entire video without the use of any lights. Generally, that would be impossible in the interiors of buildings. We do purposefully keep the lights off, and really it's unnecessary to have them. Even our groups will tend to turn the lights off themselves because they realize that they're saving energy. We're very excited about that when we see it happen and we talk to them about it. 
Also, as part of our commitment to the environment, we have gone to using energy-efficient large video monitors instead of using projectors that suck energy with high-voltage bulbs. Additionally, they're easier to see. Interior halls are lined with glass so that the light spreads throughout the building. Although a messy office is noticed, and I cannot hide. Large inset glass windows are at the end of each hallway in our meeting room areas. Yes, no need for lights during the day. The reception lobby is designed to also gather all the light that comes from the second floor. Windows are used next to the ceiling to light the sustainable wood. Even the hallway to the sleeping rooms is designed for a reflective light. And when lights are needed, they work with low voltage being reflected to the white ceiling and having the light scattered throughout the rooms. Not only is it more efficient, but more restful. And again, the windows in the sleeping rooms are all recessed three feet. You might have noticed the carpet. It's made from old tires. In areas without carpeting, we use something called monoleum instead of linoleum, which is also a more friendly material. Additionally, the building uses only sustainable farm-grown wood in the doors and window frames. It is a bit harder to maintain, but part of our commitment. Outside, there are also earth-friendly features. The sandstone is artificially made by pressing sand closer together. The insulation feature is thus stronger. And the plaza is made of crushed granite. Why? Well, crushed granite allows water to seep through to the aquifer rather than run over concrete to evaporate or end up in the sewer. And of course, this is a landscaping feature that even existing buildings can consider. This is a low-cost feature that was added originally in the, in the building of the building. And certainly, it's, it's exciting for us because we know that that water is returned to the aquifer. Oh, and those lights along the pathways. The way that the lights outside are set, they are actually facing the ground. They're not lighting the night sky, so we don't have a lot of, of um, showcasing our light from the building. It's all actually facing the ground, which is so much better for the environment as well. And that's something very simple, but it's something that's very important to remember. And of course, landscaping is an area where we can all be environmentally gracious. The Episcopal Church Center of Utah has drought-resistant plants not needing constant watering. Considering the amount of plants that were placed here and what the overall grounds footprint would be. So we use low water tolerance plants, so we're very careful about using a drip system. And plants don't only belong on the ground. Rooftop plants help reduce the building's footprint. The added benefit to being environmentally conscious is that you don't stop thinking of new ways to improve and it is also catching on with those who visit the building. Our guests buy into the concept of really working together to partner to help the environment and to do that in every way possible. They keep the lights off. They understand why waste and unnecessary energy is simply not good stewardship. We've taken and, and moved forward with that. We, we recycle what we can out of the building. We're paperless as much as possible. In our catering side, we, we do serve meals and we're careful about quantities. We don't overserve or underserve. We're as close as possible and we're careful about the management of that. They're wonderful about being specific with their guest count so our meals can be spot on. Different things that you know, you don't think about until you really develop those relationships and, and you focus on what we consider very important, and that is the stewardship of hospitality and the stewardship of, of being environmentally friendly. It is hospitality and the environment as we are taught to follow. Our churches have also become good stewards of the environment. The Episcopal Church is active in the Interfaith Power and Light Program. Three of our churches have used grants and gifts to go solar, often with the help of interfaith power and light. The more one examines new or existing buildings, the more one examines our Lord's call to stewardship, the more we see places to change. You know, it's really not that difficult. There are many things in the development stages, in the way that a building is built, just putting some thought into it that in the end is so productive and so 
I think, spiritually necessary for all of us to see and realize the importance of what God has given to us and how we should manage that. I see that we can make a difference in every part of every aspect of every purchase. You know, it's something that should be considered. With the wish for God's blessings to all saints of Whitefish and Columbia Falls, I'm Craig Wirth of the Diocese of Utah.